Hello and welcome to this demonstrational video on SDS2 load planning in operation with Strumis. Within this media, we're going to take a look at how we can create a trailer load of steel within load planning and export this to be imported into Strumis where we can then determine which steel belongs to which truck. Before we begin, it's worth noting that this operation process will work with either Tecla or SDS2. Um, we do, however, need a BSWX for the import of the steel into Strumis, but we will be fine with an IFC for the import into load planning, so we're going to need two files. It's also worth noting that the IFC that we are going to run into SDS2's load planning will need the assembly hierarchy in it. In this screenshot, you can see an output from Tecla I was working on that has the option to add the assembly properties into the IFC. We are going to want that. So as you can see, I have already loaded up my IFC into load planning. I did that by going into file and import IFC file, and then just simply loaded it into this new project. Now that I have it in SDS2, I'm now going to go ahead and grab some steels that I'd like to put onto a truck. Now, you can do this numerous different ways um, with filters or choosing segments of the job uh, based on set properties. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple and just hold shift and grab a few steels here to load in. And I think that will just about do it. I'm going to add them into my staging list so you can see them on the right hand side and they gray out in the model so you can see which ones you've already popped on there which is a little bit easier. I could go ahead and maybe grab a few others if I wanted to and then again add those in. Putting them into my staging list. Now I want to put these onto a truck so I'm going to go to view, change this over to the loading view and make sure that I have dual stack available and I'm going to then add myself a new truck in. So I'm going to call this one load one trailer one and I think it's going to be shipping tomorrow. I could spend some more time playing with the settings for the trailer itself but I'm going to leave it fairly standard. Now what I can do is I can grab a piece of steel and I can place it anywhere I want as long as it doesn't you know, fall into the red areas. Um, so it means that you can't kind of grab two bits of steel and put them in inside of each other. Look, it's naturally avoiding the other piece. To make this a quicker process rather than loading them one at a time, I'm going to go to tools and do auto place all. It's going to load every piece of steel on that it can. There was one left over. I'm just going to pop that in manually just to finish up the load. I think it's because it wanted to go on the next level. There we are. And that's now my steel's loaded onto the truck. I've obviously got more space. I only used 50% of the available weight for that load. Um, but uh, we're going to leave it at that now. Uh, I like to set mine to shipped so that I have an option during the output to choose any shipped loads. Um, if I go to file and export now, as I say in the status, I could check for just shipped or perhaps even completed loads for this. I'm going to choose the load I want, select the output as a Strumis type with the option to combine reports if I had multiple loads to join together perhaps on the output and then I'm going to hit export. It's going to let me save the file out. Let's have a little look at our file path. Okay we're going to call this one load one truck one. Okay, and that's the CSV output saved. From here, we can now go into Strumis, and we need to bring in that CSV file into Strumis to designate into the bundle column our load property. So you can see I already have this job imported and prepared at the stage where I am in production control and ready to load to site. So in order to get the property to pull into the bundle field, all we need to do is in our automated tasks make sure that we have the automated tasks in place of course for the file import and we can see I've got file location and the import tool so the file location is what I'm after and what I need to do is then set this on the backup location to where that file is so I need to choose the file that I just created and there it is load one truck one. I'm going to save this and then the other automated task that we have is the one that's going to perform the import of the data into the database and I've got that one currently set on my schedule to run every minute so all we have to do is wait a moment or two and then this should be good to go. 
Okay, so that's now run. We should now be able to go into production control. And if I just refresh my grid, we should see, there it is. There's the data being brought through for load one. And now I'm in a position where I can simply right click, go to delivery shipping and bill of lading, add those steels onto a bill of lading. So I'm going to go ahead and full screen this interface, come across here to the ellipsis button, create myself a new bill of lading. I'm going to call this one truck one in the description to add some extra information. You can see it automatically pulled through my delivery location, which is cited on my contract at the beginning of this job. You can see the destination locations are set. I can say who loaded it. I can even add additional information for when it's due, um, potentially use a third party shipping agent and even add in the number of timbers that were needed on this load. I can batch update this now to add it to that ticket. So 81 was the ticket reference. There we are and add to note to finish. So that is me utilizing the information that has come from load planning to tell me which steels need to go onto which bill of lading. And to finish up, all I need to do is just print out that shipping ticket. And there we are, a bill of lading created with Instrumis, generated from data brought through from SDS2's load planning.